Sir? Sir? Mm. If you don't mind me asking, where did you get those apples? Mm. Apple plant. Infinite apples. Over here. Those are the inhabitants of the apple planet. Those are the apple people, sir. Oh, that's why they were screaming. We've been through a lot together on this intergalactic journey through the games of Yester Lightyear, and we've seen a lot too. But the fact remains, there are just too many Star Wars games out there to cover in a timely fashion. Why don't we take a few quick looks at some of the more interesting and notable games out there that may have been unassuming at first glance. If you remember, early on I covered Star Wars X-Wing, but did you know they also made a spiritual successor to that game? They didn't go in the direction you may have expected though. This is Star Wars TIE Fighter. For the first time, you got to play as the bad guys. That's badass, dude! I want to embrace my inner dark side. I want to look and feel the part. I want to go all the way! No, okay, this, now this didn't work. Let's, I'm gonna take this off now. It's kind of like Flags of Our Fathers and Letters from Iwo Jima. If you played both X-Wing and TIE Fighter, you got to see both sides of the story. The combat and gameplay are pretty much the same as last time. The biggest difference is that everything is Empire themed. Art and music this time around were pretty extraordinary too. Definitely felt like you were part of the Empire. I have come with an offer for the Rebellion. We have little reason to trust you, Admiral Harkov. Yes, especially because you've chosen to show up to today's meeting dressed as Count Dracula. Hey, come on, man. Pay attention over here. You get this is a very serious meeting. You're getting a little too snuggly in your snuggy over there. What kind of what kind of fashion sense is this, anyways? What's coming back next? The Anakin Skywalker bowl haircut? A boy can dream. Let us show you the improvements we've made to the Tie Advance. Yes, it does appear they can still bomb things, sitting still. Most impressive. Admiral Thrawn, I am promoting you to Grand Admiral for your obedient service to the Empire. Do you know how hard it was to line up this meeting with a dark thunderstorm? I've been going to weather.com every day for like two weeks. I think the site gave me malware. Next up, Star Wars Behind the Magic, an interactive CD-ROM that was developed to be an in-depth look behind the scenes at the original trilogy. It's got glossaries galore. For example, here's a page on weapons from the Star Wars universe. Weapons tests, huh? What's going on in there? Oh, hello, Mr. Stormtrooper. You're looking, uh, conspicuously in the center of attention. Oh, what are these? Ewok rock? Yeah, that's my favorite genre, too. Oh, ow, ow! I thought it was just gonna be an enjoyable concert with furry midgets! Holy crap! Wow, what educational value. <clears throat> well, they uh, have a good point, you know? I mean, how else would you know if your weapons were functional? Hey, don't worry, dude. I just want to make sure everything's working correctly. Okay, yeah, we're good. It worked. Come on, get up. Quit being such a baby. Death Star Ray. Oh my god, that's a bit overkill, isn't it? Come on, what a cop-out. They made me sit here and watch this poor man's quiet desperation. I'm watching him pray his final thoughts and they wouldn't even give me the payload. Listen, I, ju I just wanted to see the, the guy blow up, okay? I'm not, I'm not the crazy one. I just wanted to see his legs come off and his eyes come off. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Then we have Star Wars Demolition. This was LucasArts' take on the twisted metal vehicular gladiator formula. It's definitely one of the more oddball offerings. It's got one of those cool in-world menus that actually take place in a setting, like Conquer's Bad Fur Day or something. I don't really know what it is you're laughing at, but okay, see you later then. You can pick from all sorts of different characters that have their own vehicle. Pretty much what you'd expect from a game like this, except it's Star Wars, which makes it automatically better. I honestly wouldn't complain if they remade this for current times. It would work. But let's not beat around the bush, okay? We all know why we're here. It's to watch Boba Fett's little baby legs dangle around while you play the game. Here and there, to and fro, Boba's legs will surely go. Also, there's a Gungan chessboard level where there's just a bunch of Jar Jar Binks heads on giant stones. Uh, it's a bit of a uh, Easter Island for your greatest Goonga fan, all right? You know who you are. Stand up. Don't stand up. Sit back down. And now, the one you've all been waiting for! Star Wars! Masters of the Terror 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 What's in a name? Huh? 
This is one of the most universally panned Star Wars games in the universe. Ours and theirs, although I suppose they're technically the same. What? Don't worry about it. Personally, I don't get the hate behind this one. I think it's pretty awesome. Any game in which you can make Luke Skywalker not figuratively, but literally fight himself is a game that's okay by me. Knockout. Luke Skywalker. When ready. There's a decent spread of characters, but it seems that some are more overpowered than others. These guys really must have partaken in some true resistance training to eat that many lightsabers to the face. Seems to follow similar rules to Tekken or something, so the lightsaber functions closer to a wiffle ball bat than a laser sword. That's probably part of the reason this game was so poorly received. Is that really a fair fight? Come on, Han, didn't Chewie ever tell you not to bring a fist to a sword fight? You dumbass. Relax, no problem. Darth Vader versus Or. <clears throat> Whoa, okay, well, just uh, make sure you use protection then. While we're at it, how about a look at some of the more old-fashioned merchandise? This is what's known as the Millennium Falcon playset, a thing that literally only a crazy person would want. To use this thing, you basically just strap it onto your keyboard and rock Chewbacca and Han Solo back and forth like you're trying to jerk off a badger. When you push down on one of the characters, it pushes all the way through the device and hits a key on your keyboard. So essentially, it's just a very complicated way to push buttons on your keyboard. As for the software it comes with, if you could call it that, it's just like a Dragon's Lair type thing that uses footage from the real movies. Very compelling. Inventory item retrieved. But what about, you know, regular old merch, not bundled with software? What do they call that again? Oh yeah, toys! Fancy yourself George Lucas as good guy? How about George Lucas as bad guy? George Lucas as family? All hate, all fight. It's George Lucas' actual family as Star Wars characters. You can't make that up! There are some things in life that aren't meant to be questioned. Just absorbed, admired, savored, and cherished. This is one of those things. You know you can't hold back your true feelings for me. Me. But what about all you aspiring Jedi out there? What can you use to hone your skills? Well, the Star Wars Force Trainer, of course. Except you can't, because it doesn't work. Ever. But it does make you look like a total jack-off, so at least that's one point out of ten. What's this I've got here? The Death Star, right? Obvious. But what if I told you it's actually Darth Vader in hiding? Impossible, you say? Oh, but how wrong you are! I think you must have seen Lady Gaga on TV and just uh, decided to go for it. Han and Chewie to the rescue! Watch and awe. Be amazed as Han Solo transforms into a slice of pizza. And Chewie transforms into a pita bread sandwich? What? Uh, oh, you gotta snap them together. There you go. Millennium Falcon. There it is. And so, here we are. We've seen pretty much everything there is to see. I guess we're done. Right? You didn't think I'd forget, did you? We've been spending a lot of time looking at the worst and weirdest, but I'll never forget the times I had with some of the greatest Star Wars games. Nay, games I've ever played. Things like Star Wars Battlefront, Knights of the Old Republic, Rogue Squadron, and even LEGO Star Wars. But that's what we all love about the brand, isn't it? That's why I was able to sit here and endlessly talk on and on about this magical franchise. At the end of the day, Star Wars is an open book. There's so much fun to be had in the universe, and so many depths to plunge. The ride doesn't end with Episode 6. It lives on and on, spread across the universe in the hearts of many. It's more than a film, a game, or a book. It's a goddamn phenomenon. Sir, you forgot this. It's starring me. Am I cool now? Can I be on YouTube Rewind? Huh, look at this. Star Wars droids? I never heard of this. Alright, one last game for you, 3PO. <laughs> Hmm, this tune, of course. This was played beside some of the most memorable of scenes. This game is weird, and old. Never a good combo. To control C-3PO, you have to actually move your cursor manually over to one of the panels on the bottom of the screen, and then hit your action button. So you can't just go right and shoot one of your, uh, yellow diamonds to dispose of enemies. You have to select the move button, get in place, stop, select the shoot button, and then shoot. Talk about tedium, even for the era. And then there are these weird Simon Says panels. 
Oh, what fun. You know a game's getting good when one of the main puzzles is Simon fucking says. A game you can literally buy for your keychain. Shit. Perhaps they were trying to emulate Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Yeah, wrong space movie with aliens, guys. The one you were looking for was clearly ALF! Laxative on a rope. Melmachian hiccups. The cat won't fit in the toaster. Who is winning these encounters between me and the enemies? There is no clear winner in droids. Only chaos. Whoa, good thing C-3PO's all ripe and oiled up, huh? He bent his head down a whole two inches. This move comes in very handy on the uh, Jerusalem level where C-3PO has to bow to the Western Wall. After you grind through these enemies, and I do mean grind, you get to these weird computer things near a door. I don't understand how anything in this game works. What is this, the robot TSA? Is he about to feel my junk and make sure I don't take any thermal detonators aboard the starship? I see how it is. So you're gonna profile me because I'm a droid, huh? Because I'm bright, shiny yellow? You know, sometimes I pine for the days before the Death Star exploded. They even used to have a lightsaber section. This game is so bad. C-3PO and R2 just stay in the center of the screen the whole time and move with the two frames they were graced with. I'm done, 3PO. I can't even do this for you. This box art looks familiar, though. Where have I seen it before? Oh no! Master John! You mustn't ask! What do you mean? Where's it from? It's been buried. My capacitors go faint, even to think of it. There's only one man left in the galaxy that knows its whereabouts. I'm talking, of course, about the most dreadful piece of Star Wars content in the entire galaxy. Okay, have you seen some of the stuff I've been sitting here playing? I'll believe that when I see it with my own eyes. It's not an interactive piece of software, Master John. It's... it's... much, much worse. 